going on today guys as you might be wondering what does me driving around a state park have anything to do with guitar well fall is upon us and as such you probably know all too well how the change in temperatures and humidities can affect your guitars you know it's a part of being a guitar player that we have to deal with and that is uh, adjustments you know a couple times a year especially here in north america if you live closer to the equator or if you live really far away from the equator you probably have to make adjustments to your instruments less frequently however here in north america we have four full seasons and uh, as such uh, it becomes necessary from time to time to make adjustments because let's face it guitars are made out of wood right and uh, wood contracts expands with the changes in temperature and humidity so yeah so much fun uh, and the more guitars you have well the more guitars you need to make adjustments to we're gonna go through that today in full detail uh, as I tweak and adjust and set the intonation and action on one of my guitars and uh, yeah come along for the ride but meanwhile it's a beautiful sunny day here in late October it's gorgeous here and uh, could not be happier with how beautiful the weather is the leaves are changing all that good stuff right change of seasons is uh, bittersweet I should say because on the one hand you know we love to see the change of seasons we like to see the colors the cooler weather is nice at least in the beginning right that sweater weather but then uh, winter sets in and it's all turns to shit so uh, let's enjoy it while this is here so without further ado let's get back to the studio and uh, get to work on the guitar see you there so obviously I didn't get to wrap that video up. That was late October when I first started it, but I kind of wanted to keep the intro, so you understand. Uh, we are now uh, well into spring 2023, and uh, we're at it again. So the guitars, they've been moving, you know, the wood's been moving, they've been warping and such, and uh, it's just time to make adjustments, guys. A couple times a year, you have to do it. Don't want to, it's not a lot of fun, but it's necessary if you want your instrument to stay playable, to sound well, and all that good stuff. So for the purposes of this demonstration in the video today, I'm gonna be using my Harley Benton Amarok six string here. Uh, in its current form, I have it tuned to, I have it set up to C sharp standard, which is three semitones down from E standard, obviously. And uh, you know, I just found that I haven't been playing it a lot recently. You know, I'm not really, uh, the creative juices haven't been pulling me to this guitar. So I feel like I'm gonna put it in a different tuning, get back to playing it and recording with it a little bit. And so that's what we're gonna do today. So uh, with that in mind, I decided I'm gonna put this into dad gad tuning. So that's going to be fun. I'm on the whole John Brown Monuments kick. You know, Ollie Steele, those guys are amazing rhythm-wise. And I really love the stuff that they do with dead gad tuning. So we're going to try it out again. It's been a while since I've used it. And uh, that's what we're going to do. So this is a typical 25 and a half inch scale length. Your typical Fender scale length for this guitar. And instead of 10 to 46, a lot of people recommend 10 to 46 string gauge for dead gad. Well, I'm going to go 10 and a half to 48. Uh, if you're not familiar with that, 10 and a half's amazing. Same thing can be said for nine and a half. So if you're not familiar with those, there's a few companies, Ernie Ball and a few others that make nine and a half and 10 and a half. And it's a great, perfect Goldilocks setting if you're not really sure what gauge you want to go with between nines and tens, tens and elevens. So that all said, today we're going to look at four things. We're going to focus on tuning, intonation, string action, and neck relief. Those four things together in concert will will constitute, you know, whether or not your instrument is playable, sounds good, feels good, or not. So we're gonna have to make adjustments to all those things. First things first, we're gonna change the strings on this bad boy, get it tuned up, and then we're gonna work on the intonation and everything else. All right, so a lot of uh, luthiers and experts online will tell you that you should use specific measurements when you're setting up your string action, your neck relief, even your pick height. Uh, they'll give you specific measurements, specific number values that they recommend as guidelines that you should go by. But really, I would say throw that all out the window. It's a good baseline. It's good fundamental if you have no concept of how to make those adjustments uh, and what tolerances to set them to. But if you're somebody who's been playing for a while, you just know when the strings feel like they're too far away or the bow is too significant in your neck, you can just feel it. And obviously you can hear when you've got any fret buzz or strings just kind of buzzing out and that lack of sustain. So you know that something needs adjusting. Uh, same can be said for intonation. So intonation, if you're not familiar, is basically that your guitar stays in tune as you move up the neck. When the strings are open and you tune them up, they're all perfect, but when you go to make a, you know, 
fret a chord or something up here or play a melody uh, higher up in the neck, it just seems like it's out of tune. Well, that's because of your intonation. That needs adjusting. So tools that are often recommended to be used to make these adjustments are things such as your uh, 64ths uh, measuring tool, um, string or uh, fretboard radius gauges, right? You've seen those probably before for the different radiuses, radii, and then of course, uh, feeler gauges. So I just want to show you those tools. I have them all. I have used them in the past, but I really find that at the end of the day, what matters most is that it sounds good and that it feels good to you, right? So no matter what the measurements are, what, no matter what the number values are, if it feels good, if you can move around on, on your neck very comfortably and it sounds great, you're good to go. It doesn't matter what the number is. Uh, and it's all personal preference anyways. I mean, some people like higher action, some people like lower action. And then there's freaks in nature like Ingve Malmsteen who has really high action and can still play at the speed of light. So that makes no sense to anybody, but uh, there are freaks out there. Uh, for people like me, normal mere mortals that don't play that fast, I like a really low action. I like it so low that there's almost a tiny amount of string buzz, at least on the three wound strings, just the slightest amount of string buzz. That means that the string is just low enough for me that I can really move across them a little bit quicker. That's how I prefer it. You might not. Um, some people do like the higher action because you get a much higher sustain. You get much clearer, cleaner notes. But then if, you're, if your action is too high, you've got the, another problem whereby you are actually fretting the note and putting it sharp. So you're throwing it out of tune essentially because of the string action is so high. So you have to find that happy medium between too high and too low. You know, what's good for you. And then neck relief, you're going to get 100 opinions from 100 different people. Um, there are, it does need to have some minuscule amount of, of bow. There's got to be something there, some tiny bit of relief. And when people say they like their neck dead straight, like myself, actually, I do like it pretty much bone straight, but then just the slightest, almost imperceptible amount of bow is all I really need uh, to ensure that it just feels the same all the way up the neck. So what we're going to do is tune it up first. Like I said, then we're going to go into intonation. Then we're going to check out the relief and everything else. So we're going to do truss rod adjustments, all that good stuff. Stick with me. If you've done this stuff before, um, you know, you might just want to watch it again from somebody else. <laughs> I'm not a pro. I don't pretend to be any kind of expert luthier or anything like that. But I do know how I like my guitar set up and I've got plenty of them. And um, I think I've got a fair amount of experience, you know, 20, 30 years worth of making these adjustments so that I feel comfortable doing it on my own instruments. If you don't, definitely take it to a qualified tech first and foremost, okay? If you're not comfortable with any of this stuff other than changing strings, take it to somebody else who is and knows how to do it right, but you're gonna have to pay a few bucks. So let's start with the tuning. I'll speed it up in real time and then we'll get on to the next stuff. Stick with me. All right, so I prefer to work on the guitar on my lap in the playing position for most of the time. Um, I never put it on a workbench. I don't use that neck holder thing because when you do, you're just putting more relief and more weight on the neck. So you're not gonna get accurate adjust, uh, adjustment readings anyways. So let's just start by taking these strings off and, um, you know, we'll speed this part up for you guys. But as I go, I'll just keep talking because I got to keep myself entertained. Yeah, this guitar has locking tuners. It'll be a lot quicker. And we've got a fixed bridge too. I should mention that too. Um, I wanted to make this demonstration with a fixed bridge. It's a little more complicated with a floating trem, like a Floyd Rose. Um, not a whole lot more complicated, but just takes more time because you have to make sure that at the end of the day, it's it, that trem is level, you know, kind of flat and parallel to the uh, body of the guitar. But yeah. So I just changed these strings a few weeks ago. And then I realized, you know what? I'm over C sharp standard tuning for a while. So they're coming off. But yeah, I've been using Ernie Ball strings for a long time too. I mean, years now. And they've got so many different gauge options that it's like there's no way you can't find something that's going to work for you without having to actually cobble together a custom set, which you can also do through Ernie Ball if you care to. So we're going to get all these strings off first. And, you know, I'm not going to clean the neck this time. You probably could throw some uh, fretboard polish on there, clean it up a little bit. But this really isn't too bad. And this has stainless steel frets too, so it's just uh, it's going to work well. It's funny, you know, when I first started playing the guitar, I, did, I didn't even know what intonation was. I didn't find out about intonation probably for a couple of years after I was playing the guitar. And I always wondered, you know, I've got the guitar completely perfectly in tune with the open strings. Why is it when I move up the neck with my chords, something sounds out of whack? It's because of the intonation, which is basically the, the length of each string 
um, has to be adjusted from time to time, a little shorter, a little wider, longer, to ensure that it stays in tune all the way up the neck. It's just a matter of physics, I guess you could say. Whenever you change your string gauge or your tuning, you are gonna have to make adjustments to all four of these things. Like I said, tuning, intonation, neck relief, and string action height. You know what, I think I might just dust this down real quick with the cloth. Uh, I'm not gonna bother with lemon oil or any of that this time, but uh, maybe next time. These stainless steel frets are so polished and so smooth that it doesn't, I don't even wanna mess with it. I'm, there's no reason to clean these off right now. Another trick too, man, this is just a real simple <laughs> trick, tip. Uh, clean cotton cloth. Every time you're done playing your guitar for the day or after a gig, just gently wipe it down. Get some of that residue and sweat and gook off the strings. They'll last so much longer. There you go, free fix. Now your strings will last you weeks instead of days. Or months if you don't touch it very often. Okay, 48 gauge going in. That's what she said. I like to get all the strings on and then um, tune them all kind of at once and stretch them out all at the same time. Now, if I am working on a floating trim, I absolutely change just one string at a time. That way you're not completely upsetting the balance of your, your trim, you know, float. It just, it just seems to be more severe. If you take them all off at once, I think it's a mess. It's not, just more time consuming. Is it hot in here or is it just me? One of my little gripes I have about this guitar is that the tuners are too close to each other, so you end up bumping each tuning peg as you're turning it. Um, not, not much can do about that. But uh, Otherwise, it's a great guitar. I really love it. Halfway there, guys. Yeah, again, I'm really loving these 10 and a halfs. It's perfect. You know, sometimes you drop down to, I don't know, drop D or something lower, and you're like, these strings are just too slack. But then if you go up to, let's say, 11s, they're too tight, you know, you just can't seem to get it right. That's where these 10 and a halfs come in, man. 10 and a halfs and 9 and a halfs, I love them. All of my standard tuning guitars are now 9 and a half to 44s, all of them. And uh, could not be happier with that. If you don't have locking tuners on any of your guitars, man, check it out. It's like a lifesaver. So much time saved. And if you're playing live gigs and you break a string and you have to change a string, at least it'll take you like two minutes instead of, you know, five or ten. So, yeah, recommend it. All right, we're locked and loaded. Ready to tune up, finally. These are all tight, I'm gonna snip them off now. Get your handy dandy tuner, get her tuned up. Sounds perfect. <laughs> all right, now we gotta stretch them out a little bit. Uh, I just use my hands, I know they make a little tool for it. I've been doing this for 30 years, so I'm gonna keep doing it this way. It's easy. Do it a couple of times. Just be gentle. If you go too hard, you still might snap your string in your hand and that's no good. It's like watching paint dry, isn't it? Watching somebody change their strings. But I'll put some really relaxing music in the background. So it'll be like one of those ASMR videos. We're just gonna like chill and watch it, listen to the noises. Maybe not. All right, let's retune. All right, so we're basically in tune now and uh, we're gonna keep checking the tuning. Every time you make any adjustment whatsoever, You've got to check the tuning, intonation, all four of those things over and over again until they're all well settled in and you kind of have your final product. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is once we're in tune and the strings have you know had a little chance to relax and, and stay in tune basically and settle in, then I'm going to check the intonation, which uh, we'll, we'll go through it now. I'll just show you what I'm doing. So the way I check intonation is um, hit the harmonic, the natural harmonic and the 12th fret. That should be your same D note, for instance. I'm on dad get, so this is D here. D. And then the fretted note at the 12th fret should also be a perfect D. Which, they're coming in line. If the note is sharp compared to the harmonic, 
then you need to extend the string, which means you need to take the bridge saddles and use a screwdriver and pull the string back so it's a little longer. If it's flat, you do the opposite, shorten the string length. You know, let the screw out and let this bridge saddle move forward just a little bit. And just do a little bit at a time, retune the string, and then check it again. I mean, that's that's basically your intonation. So that's, a, that's an A, and that's an A. So I'm pretty good so far. A's in tune, fretted note, also matching up. So we don't have to make any adjustments yet. And you'll hear it too. If one of them is sharp or flat, you're, you're just going to hear it. You're going to pick up on it. Okay, so we're tuned up, we're intonated. Now I'm gonna check the neck relief. And for me, what I normally do with the neck relief is this. So you're gonna fret the first fret, or else you can use your capo, if you've got a nice little handy dandy capo. Set it on the fret itself. Just make sure you're not wiggling the strings around, make sure it's just, just depressing them and not pushing them one way or another. So right on top of the first fret. And then what you wanna do is take one of your fingers in your right hand and I like to go somewhere around the 17th to the 19th fret. It's often recommended to put to fret the note where the neck meets the body. But in this particular case, it's a through neck construction, so I kind of have to just, you know, arbitrarily pick a fret. So, I'm going to go around let's say 19. Okay? If you go any farther, some some experts online will recommend fretting the last note on your fretboard. I wouldn't, and here's why. Because your neck actually has a taper on the last few frets right by the body. They often don't mention this, and maybe some manufacturers don't do it, but they should be. So essentially, I'm gonna over-exaggerate, but your neck, along the length of your neck, has a nice bow to it, and then somewhere past like the 15th or 17th fret, there's just this taper down. So the wood does this, and then it kind of goes down. The reason for that is so that the notes in the upper register, regardless of what note you're hitting, it's just gonna ring out clearly. There won't be any fret buzz or any funny issues down there. Um, that's why they do it. So if you were to depress, you know, were to fret the last note, you're going to have that hump somewhere in the middle that's going to just throw off your measurement. So that's not really an accurate reading of what your neck relief is. Trust me on this one. You know, other people have mentioned it too, but you don't hear about it too often. So I think some people don't realize that the neck has been made in that, that you know, angle or that the frets have been leveled down to kind of compensate for that level, for that angle rather. So... Like I said, somewhere between the 15, 17, 19 fret, whatever you're good with, you know, I'm, I'm going to go 19 on this one. And then in between these two points where it's fretted, um, just somewhere in the middle, you want to kind of press down on the string, right? And just take a look at how much or how little space there is between the bottom of the string and the top of the frets. There's very little here. I mean, this neck is practically bone straight, which is pretty much how I like it. Same here. Check all six strings. If you see no movement at all, that means that the strings are completely laying on the frets. That's not good. You will have to make an adjustment to the truss rod. You'll have to loosen it up a little, give it a little more relief. Or it might have too much back bow, uh, which is completely terrible. You don't want that at all. So you're really gonna have to loosen up the truss rod. These look pretty good. Um, I could even loosen this just a tad, but there is a little bit of space. You'll hear that tapping noise. Right? If you don't hear that at all, they're just laying on the frets and it's not doing anything. So um, I'm liking how the neck relief is on this. It's not too bad. And being that this is a five piece neck, I think that also helps to accentuate the stability of it, not really warping too much with the changes in temperature and humidity. So, so far so good. We're getting pretty lucky with that. Um, if you've never made adjustments to your truss rod before, I would encourage you to give it a try. But if you're really extremely uncomfortable with it, or it's really so tight that you feel like you can't get it to budge at all, again, take it to a qualified tech, they'll figure it out. Because you can strip it, you can break it, and then it needs serious adjust, uh, fixing. They basically have to take the neck apart to get at it and replace it, so that's a mess. But if you're willing to try it or if you've done it before, just make sure you've got the right size Allen key to get in there. You know, Either it's here or it's a heel uh, wheel mount truss rod adjuster, which is even nicer, it's, it's just quicker to get to. And just go very small incremental changes. I mean, a quarter of a turn, or rather an eighth of a turn or less even. Just a little bit. Let it settle in for a minute or two. See if, it, if you've made any change at all. If not, go another little eighth of a turn. You never really want to go more than like a half a turn, you know, as far as the, the wheel is concerned. I mean, that's probably too extreme. It shouldn't need that unless it's a brand new guitar and just came from the factory. There is a setting whereby 
the truss rod is kind of loose and just kind of floating. So you might just touch it and just it moves very easily. That means it's not giving pressure one way or the other. But if it's a dual action truss rod, that means it can both help the neck expand and help it contract depending on which way you turn it. Uh, it's just like a regular screw, guys, lefty loosey, righty tighty. So if you're looking at the truss wheel here, you know, you're looking at it at this angle, clockwise, righty tighty, right? So if you're gonna tighten it, it's gonna straighten the neck out. If you're gonna loosen it, you know, you're gonna pull back on it, it's gonna give it more, it's gonna get let the strings take over with their tension, their pulling, and kind of let the neck bow back up. All right, that pretty much wraps it up for today, guys. Uh, just real quick, I wanna give a quick shout out to you guys who make this all possible. Thank you so much, I really appreciate it. If you wanna show some love to the channel, check out the links below in the description. Uh, I've got links to Amazon. If you buy anything at all from Amazon, click on one of those links, go through, buy, purchase, whatever you want. It doesn't have to be the item that you clicked on. Links down there, it really helps out the channel. I seriously can't thank you guys enough. You've made this happen. We're almost at a thousand subscribers. We're getting there guys. With your help, we're gonna do it. Um, if you get any value from this too, you know, hit the subscribe button, please hit the like button. Let me know your thoughts, put a comment down below. Tell me I suck, it doesn't matter. I wanna hear from you guys. Thanks so much. Until next time, I'm out of here. See ya! I'm gonna cut all that shit out. <laughs>